All right, welcome back. Pilate was amazed that Jesus was silent as he questioned him, and Pilate was deeply concerned that he was about to do the wrong thing himself, condemning a man who obviously was innocent, certainly not worthy of death. And he questioned Jesus about that, as we mentioned last time. Uh, you know, don't you know I have authority to release you uh, or authority to crucify you? And Jesus said, you wouldn't have any authority over me unless it had been given to you from above. And he also went on to say, and this is John chapter 19 and verse number 11, for this reason, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Either a reference to Judas or a reference to probably more likely all of the uh, uh, the Jewish leaders who delivered Jesus over to Pilate. And uh, I'll, I'll only bring that up just to say that in God's mind, not all sin is the same. I've said this before to you, and this is one more proof. Somebody can have a greater sin, so that means there's lesser sins, right? Right, no argument with that. All right, let's keep reading a little bit further in John before we jump back into Matthew's account of this same time. Um, verse number 12 of John 19, As a result of this, Pilate made efforts to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes Caesar. So that's their line. They keep feeding to Pilate. You know, this guy claims to be a king. This is sedition. And so you need to execute one who's guilty of such a heinous uh, crime against the state. Uh, so therefore, when Pilate heard those words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, behold, your king. And so they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king. And oh my goodness, listen to these next two words, but Caesar. I mean, what a denial of, of God really is what it amounted to. Okay, well, we may eventually wander back into John's gospel. I love how, you know, Pilate looking to get a little revenge against these people he despises so much, puts a sign uh, above Jesus's head on the cross in several languages. And it says the same thing in every language, King of the Jews. And these guys don't like it. And they say, Why? You, you ought to say, you know, he claimed he was the King of the Jews. That would show his offense to everybody. And Pilate would not renege on that just to, you know, a dig against them. And, you know, unwittingly, declaring by that sign who was really dying on that cross. Okay, can we go back to Matthew chapter 27 now? I'm sorry for that little uh, side trip to John, but there's so much more in John's gospel about it that you wouldn't get from Matthew, Mark, or, or, or Luke, right? So now we wanna look at this, uh, the final part of this story, um, starting in verse number 15 of Matthew chapter 27. Now at the feast, and this is one more attempt, by the way, for Pilate to you know, save himself from having to do what they're asking him to do. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the people any one prisoner whom they wanted. At that time, they were holding a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Matthew doesn't tell us, but Mark and Luke, I, I'm not sure who it is, tell us that Barabbas was a murderer and a robber. And Matthew calls him a notorious prisoner, okay? He's got a reputation. So when the people gathered together, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? And he gives them two choices. Barabbas, this guy that, you know, hands down is, the, is, is a bad guy and normally would be the one who would be released, Bara or not be released, Barabbas or Jesus who was called the Christ. So you can see he's trying to extricate himself one more time from this predicament which he's found himself in. I want to let Jesus go and I've always, we've got this custom, we always let somebody go whom they want and so I'm gonna give them a choice and surely, surely given this choice that they're gonna not say let Barabbas go, a murderer, let a murderer and a robber back on the streets. They're gonna say, well, let Jesus go. 
you know, it's a, it's a plan. It's a pretty good plan. You, you know, it has a pretty good chance of succeeding, except for one thing, what was in the hearts of the chief priests and the elders of the people and those whom they had uh, gathered there to, to, to cry out for Jesus' crucifixion. Verse 18, for he knew, that is Pilate, knew that because of envy they had handed him over. Isn't that interesting? So verse 19, while he was still sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message saying, have nothing to do with that righteous man, for last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to put Jesus to death. But the governor said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus, who was called Christ? And they all said, crucify him. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they kept shouting all the more, saying, crucify him. And so Pilate has done his best to avoid having to grant them their request. And you can imagine now the feelings of Barabbas when the jailer came and opened up his cell to let him free, he was for certain uh, going to be executed himself for his own crime, uh, crimes rather, uh, but yet he's set free. And when he asks what the reason is, uh, he's told, well, it's because Pilate gave everyone a choice. Would they rather have you released and go free, condemned to die, or would rather have Jesus released and go free, who's condemned to die, and everybody chose you. And so Barabbas was certainly aware of at that point that the only reason that he went free was because of Jesus. And isn't he the perfect picture of me and of you? Because the only reason we're free is because Jesus hung on that cross for us. See you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.